Okay. Uh, maybe we are thinking one year organized and one year uh, not organized mm -hmm. uh, competition in Turkey. And also, uh, actually, I have the first thing that I can do that now. Uh, some country, as I saw today, uh, including the all Europe articles, is it, uh, it maybe we are making the I know, yeah. yeah. Is it okay or not? Maybe we can make it uh, for next years for the, the all Europe's, we can say. Yeah, well, there are no, it's C, so rules are flexible. <laughs> uh, Philip, are you taking notes? Or? Uh, yeah, because it would be good if somebody takes notes, maybe either Pad or Ricky or whatever. Somebody else. We are saying to the CE, yeah. the countries, it's very strict. Yeah, I will talk about it in because we also experimented with this in Ukraine. Somebody else wants to share, or we can start probably. I mean, so yesterday people didn't come in until like quarter past, so there's still work for that. Okay, quarter past. Yeah. Okay, then somebody else has a story of Sea Springs they want to share. Somebody else was involved in organizing it, wants to organize it next year. <laughs> okay, so you are from? So, yeah. Okay. We've been uh, taking part in it for the last four years. I kind of organized it then, but I love to <laughs> participate. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, uh, we, I think we are facing a uh, similar problem as you, like an inflation of Okay. Yeah. Some other sea spring experiences. Hungary. What is your sea spring experience? You uh, organized it, liked it, hated it. Was Okay. Best one is possible, best ten is more difficult. Yeah, so uh, next year, I'm curious if you have some other approaches, how can you have a then of course it would be better if not the number of characters or something like that, but yeah. the more sophisticated evaluation process. Yeah, I will talk about this in a bit because basically we have tried everything in Ukraine on evaluation already, and we are still not happy, but it's better than what we had. Mm. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's a successful campaign, contest, mm -hmm. and uh, it's quite popular. So mm -hmm. I think we have the highest number of uh, articles for CSP from all of the private contests. Oh, okay, so it's like the most successful contest for Hungary. Okay, someone else? I think we have probably Hungary less articles, no, we have probably less articles, but they work better articles, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, I chose the title in a bit provocative way because the reference for less articles for Wikimedia Ukraine is 4.5 thousand articles. Yeah, but like getting 4.5 articles in like a short contest. But the majority of the articles were quite high quality as well, so I can't open the only thing which was, sorry. Go, go, go. It's like a discussion before we start because we are waiting for people to finish breakfast. Yeah. And uh, there were quite a la large number of, I don't know what was it, football players or something like that. So when mm -hmm. you need create a big table and some few sentences and that's yeah. it because yeah. it's easy to create and then you can create some quite like, easy things. Yeah. Large of articles and this we would like to go in Yeah. Someone else wants to share? <laughs> you are from uh, Republika Srpska. Did you organize it as well?
Ja. Ja. How did you like it? Okay. Uh, we also have Latvia. Do you have experience with organizing? Oh, it's, it was not you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in German Wikipedia, we use the, the same one that was like the article like relations, like uh -huh. statistical method, because we were the system was like when you have more than 2,000 uh, bytes, it's like one byte, and if it's more than 6,000 bytes, it's five bytes. Uh -huh. Okay. Because of those 6,000 bytes of characters, mostly it's a table. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of led to some disappointment because people were like, oh yeah, the box is going to calculate that as well. And then were a bit surprised afterwards when um, I projected some points. Mm -hmm. and so it meant that they like to drop down the direction of the like, final. Okay, yeah. Um, like I didn't have to do anything really except for just like checking out for sort of like the uh, other elements and see, and see if like the actual text like outweighs the other things. So. Yeah, um, I guess we'll do it again. Um, yeah, I think that's a thing that the C will do it again anyway because people like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we are almost there. Yeah. So let's. It's like 15, quarter past the hour. People finished breakfast who wanted. Those who don't want will join in the middle. So let's start. So I'm Mikola Kozrenko, user Nick K. I am one of the organizers of Sea Spring in Ukraine. I am not an international organizer, but a national organizer. But we in Wikimedia Ukraine had so much experience organizing that Sea Spring, so both good and bad, that I decided to share it. And this session is a workshop, so it will have a mix of me presenting like what we found out and what we did, and your ideas. Sorry for that. Yeah, and, and there will be a place for your ideas, for your suggestions, because the good outcome of the session would be if we gather some ideas, some suggestions, some improvements that we can do to the contest to make it better, more impactful, more efficient, and that we can borrow these ideas for the next year. You can borrow these ideas for your local contests, and we can probably do something internationally, because we have the C Spring user group looking at us. So if you don't know what Sea Spring is, I hope most of you know, but quick overview. So it's an annual writing contest about countries and communities of Central and Eastern Europe. Countries and communities in a broad sense because most article lists are geography based, but some of them are community based, like Republika Srpska, for example, has a community list for like a community which is not a state. We have also like lists for, for example, Crimean Tatar, for Serbian, which are not countries, but which have like distinct, distinct lists and distinct parts of the contest. It was born during the sea meeting in Kyiv, famously in the Bochka bar. <laughs> I don't know, haven't checked. 
uh, then first organized in spring 2020, 2015, not surprisingly in spring, and it became organized every spring since then. So the article contest is based on lists of what people consider important articles about every community. It is every community which creates articles of what they consider important, so the notion of important is very different for each community. And anyway, it's not limited to this list, so you can write articles about these communities, but outside the lists. So as I said, we started only with countries and then grew to minority communities like Romani, Serbian, Western Armenian, and so on. Sometimes we also have non-C communities who join, but mainly to write, not to add lists. So we have English, Italian, Uzbek, who contributed in different years. And it's a key example of C collaboration. So this is like our showcase project of the region. We are showing this as a basically Central and Eastern European key collaboration, how we meet together, work together, meet online, work online together, and now meet here to discuss it and discuss how to make it better. Barbara mentioned yesterday that this is like the most active project among all C communities because almost everybody organizes it. So let's now look how we can make it better. So what we did visit in Ukraine. So we were almost always the first in the CE. We first organized it in 2015. We got 630 articles and we said, well, quite good contest, but we organized bigger article contests before. Our benchmark at the time was like we had a few contests which reached up to 1,000 articles and we said, yeah, quite interesting, let's try next year, maybe it will be more efficient. Then we did it in 2016 and we got almost 1.5 thousand articles. We said, well, this is our best contest ever and we got the first place among all C countries in terms of number of articles. We were happy, we were very successful, we liked it. Then we said, well, we actually want to get more improved articles because we got very few of them. And in 2017, we got 222 improved articles and uh, 1,100 created ones. So we were quite happy that we get enough improved articles, still like way less than created. Then 2018, we got more than 2,000 articles and we got by far the first place among all C communities because participants became very competitive and participants wanted to prove that, well, Ukraine can write articles. So Ukraine can write articles, but we asked like, well, how do we judge now 2,000 articles? Then in 2019, the same thing repeated and we got again 2,000 articles and it became a complete mess because we wanted to evaluate them properly and we got results only in December, which is quite far from the spring. And we said, well, we want to change something. And in 2020, COVID came and Ukraine was in lockdown right during sea spring. So it was perfect for people to go completely mad and write more than 4,000 articles. And like we said, okay, it's great. People went mad, but like our jury was more than 30 people approximately because like you need a lot of people to evaluate this. And we said, well, people go mad. Let's next year shorten it to one month so that people write less articles. And even in one month, they wrote 1.7 thousand articles, which is almost the same as they wrote in pre-COVID years. So like even in one month, we get a decent number of articles because people started preparing in advance. People started being more tactical. And we thought, yeah, okay, we are the first even this way. We took a break in 2022 for the reasons you know, unfortunately. And in 2023, we came back. We, we are again the first among all C communities. And like this year, we focused on the fact that we really want less but better articles, that we decided not to focus on quantity and basically not to encourage participants to write hundreds of articles, but to encourage them to write really good quality articles and to encourage them to write articles that really cover gaps. Because, well, <coughs> when we started in 2015, coverage of sea countries was a big gap for us. We were missing quite key articles on other countries of the region. And by now we think we covered like the 
very key things, like we have articles about history of Poland, we have articles about geography of uh, Serbia and so on, but we are still missing like some topics and we want people to focus on the topics we need and not like write hundreds of football articles as Gerger said because, oh sorry, as uh, Tamas said, because that's something that we get as well. So what did we found out? I'm given like five things that we found that we wanted to improve during the contest and then we will discuss one by one. I will present like what we found and then let's discuss for it each theme, the suggestions, the ideas you have. So th the first thing that we think went wrong in the beginning were article lists that we started this 10 years ago by people just dumping articles they think interesting and it became like more and more diverging from what the actual gaps are and so we wanted to focus on like covering the gaps rather than like giving generic ideas. Uh, then what we what also went wrong was topic selection so like beyond article lists we want to make sure that like also among sea countries, also among like topics to cover within the contest because we have like thematic uh, division about history, geography, politics and so on. Some of them are covered better than the others. So we thought that we need to do something here as well to encourage people to write like what is really important, what is really a gap rather than write whatever they want. Of course, we cannot like force people to write about something. So we need to like mildly encourage them. And then about going wrong, there was quality in judging. So we want to judge the articles in the way that really encourages quality and not and discourages basically writing articles that people will have to fix, rewrite later. And then what we added also, we added sister projects because we thought that this is a good way to promote sister projects and to increase impact. And we added also partnerships for better outreach to reach more people, to get better communication, because Sea Spring is international by nature, and it's also quite easy. So it's a good opportunity to encourage people. Do you see any themes that you think we should improve in the sea, which is Sea Spring, or change that is missing here, that you would want to discuss as well? Is it me or? Yes, that's you. Like because if you are connected to the. Okay. I will do it here, yeah, one second. I will do it. Oh, oh no. Something else that you wanted to discuss? We can come back to this in the end if you have some ideas. Go. Of course, of course, of course. This is just the outline of topics, if you want to add a topic. No, let's go. So, article lists. So, what we think went wrong with them, from our experience. So, the initial idea is that article lists would have around 100 most important articles about the community, and both. So, basically, we write 100 most important articles for Ukraine, so that other countries can translate them write about these topics and other countries give also like their top 100 articles so that we can like do an exchange basically that we get ideas from everybody and we give our own ideas and like people get to write articles from this pool. The idea was great and then the notion of 100 most important articles became quite unclear because every community find their own ways of choosing 100 articles. So like we know that there are vital articles about every country, like we need to have an article about Mozart about Austria, we need to have an article about uh, Sandor Petofi from Hungary and so on. So like we need to have an article about Vojvodina when we write about Serbia and so on. But these articles for most communities are already written. So people choose some other criteria. They decide themselves what they think this list should look like, and every country 
chooses every community, chooses something on their own, and it's not always clear why. So some communities went go mad and choose more than 100 articles, sometimes hitting the technical limit of 400, because that's approximately how, much artic how many articles the page can handle. So that will be on the page, right? No, in total. Totally. totally. It's total of 400 approximately where the page breaks. In, past, in the past there were also sub-pages that like some countries went completely mad and created sub-pages of pages. Yes, that's why because the topics are sub-pages, so it is possible to create 400 sub Of course, it is, it is possible and we have seen this, but well, that's uh, how people do sometimes and it's not like... It's basically, in this case, if you write, get like 1,000 articles, you're saying like, okay, I cannot write 1,000 articles, what I really should write about. And it's also like, we look at this list sometimes and we say like, okay, we got an article about this, but like, why did we even get it? Because there is like some obscure Bulgarian scientist who is not even famous in Bulgaria, or like Estonian writer who has English and Estonian and no other language, and who has a small stub and we are saying like, okay, we wrote it, now, oh, okay, perfect. Now it's an orphan article, which, uh, so like, uh, so like we in Wikimedia Ukraine care a, a bit about connectivity projects that we don't want to have too, too many orphan articles, which are not linked uh, to or from any article. So like we get a lot of them which, exact, which exist like isolatedly and we are saying now, okay, people wrote about this random people, like where do we put them now? They are not connected to anything we, we have written. And on the other hand, so like we prepare lang article lists for Ukraine and for smaller languages it's quite difficult because for example, we notice that the most famous Ukrainian po poet Taras Shevchenko is covered in most wikis, so we said, like, let's add a book by him. And in the, in the end, Bashkir Wikipedia translated this book by Taras Shevchenko, but had no article about Taras Shevchenko himself. Mm -hmm. So this is an amazing example of how, like, people get, like, a partial coverage of the topic without, like, getting more important things. Yeah, you wanted to say something? Sorry? Yeah, I'm in the end of the list of problems that we found. Do you have any other things that we need to improve? I think there are, there are quite a lot of important topics still, mm -hmm. which are not yet covered, mm -hmm. uh, and it is hard to uh, submit them in the NLC screen contest because there is no English article about them. Yeah. So Yes. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, on the next slide we talk about this. No, uh, well, because basically that's what we found as well that like we we want to have like English, French, German article about everything that we add so that people can translate from a language they reasonably know. But we know that sometimes it doesn't exist. If you have capacity, like we want to organize it, we have not done it yet in Ukraine, some like pre-translation contest. So like we choose like, okay, these are 10 articles in Ukrainian that we want to translate into other languages. Let's translate them into English first. If you choose like 10, probably you will be able to handle it. If you choose like 500, probably it's more difficult, but we haven't organized it yet. So we have just it as an idea that we want to do later. But it's a very good point that if it's Hungarian only, it will greatly limit the number of people who can translate it or re even read it. <laughs> yeah? Um, from what I understand, the idea was not to write about your own culture, but to yeah. uh, move to you know, do this other part of yeah. the scene. But then people in our community, at first mostly, were like, well, we are part of C, why shouldn't we write about ourselves? Uh, which sort of defeats the purpose, right? Yeah. Um, so we had some trouble persuading them not to do that. 
but then they, they found these um, border categories, like, you know, how things are in, in the Balkans or, or generally the sea are kind of blurry. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the borders exist, but they're not, you know, yeah. in, in effect, they're, they're not strict, right? So they accepted to qualify Tesla as a Croatian if it gives them points. Ah, well, Tesla's a done deal, but, but like, there are many people who have, you know, ties to several communities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's something to think about because it's not easy sometimes to uh, separate the you know the clear categories, uh, people, nationalities. You mentioned Sean Petrofi and he's also celebrated in the circus. So yeah. As long as Sean Petrofi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good point also that like the right cross border. Yeah. Sometimes like people label these two or three countries. Sometimes it works, but if it's like actually your own country with like a tiny tie abroad? I don't know. I think that it's, it's hard sometimes to sort of adjudicate whether that should count or not. But yeah. In general, I, I would be leaning. Yeah. Some other things that you think we need to improve in the list or problems you have seen? Well, so this year we created like an international list for like a, a city wide Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like no community uh, alone would cover necessarily, like around Baltica and the Baltics, or like other like transnational pro uh, programs yeah. in the region. So that could also be a way to um, include more articles that cover several different communities. Yeah, that's a good point. D how do you think, by the way, it, was it successful, not successful, the international list? Yeah. Go. I can tell now how we did it in Ukraine. You, you can maybe somebody else can suggest other approaches, but feel free to choose. So, like what we chose for Ukraine is we chose that it should have like on the average no more than 10, 15 links covered, and if it's more than that, probably we want to move it somewhere else, not like to the main list, but maybe like somewhere else. And then if uh, it is, we want to rotate it also, to like rotate, we want to rotate our list so that like people see something new every year. And then like it's up to you to think like if this article is like really, really, really that important. If like, I don't know, you see that nobody in other Wikipedia wrote about Chandler Petofi, maybe you want them to write about it. But if it's like some random event, like if nobody wrote about Hungarian election 1998 up to 2023, Probably, well, not every year people will want to write about it. Yeah, so I will tell like how we tried to fix it in Ukraine and then there will be a floor for your ideas also. So the first thing we did, like level one basically, that was our initial set of improvements. So we said, well, because the list is supposed to contain 100 articles, we we limit ourselves at 100 articles, plus or minus, sometimes it's 105, but like not 200. Because, well, the list is to be short so that people see like what are really important suggestions, but then we created extended lists because every year we get a lot of ideas and like if people look for inspirations, they want to write specifically about Ukrainian singers, we can give them like 
20 ideas of articles about Ukrainian singers. But like we never know what people will actually want to write about, so we cannot like say, okay, this year we give like in our main list 20 articles about Ukrainian singers because somebody in the community thinks it's important. Uh, there are of course like the more people are involved in this, the more ideas you get. So our extended lists are now pretty long. You can find ideas for everything and you know like there are people passionate about their own topic who think that, well, we definitely need to have many articles about Ukrainian railway stations. We definitely need to have many articles about Ukrainian singers and so on. So like we say, okay, we put like one or two key articles into the main list and everybody else goes everything else goes to the extended list so that we can also show this extended list, for example, to wiki projects in other languages. So like, okay, if your wiki project music in German Wikipedia, you can find like 100 music related articles about Ukraine if you want. Then we also want to pick articles that have at least a decent version, like we defined it basically as a decent version explaining why the subject is so notable. So, and in at least one major language, preferably English, sometimes we accept that it's German, French, Spanish, like basically an international language that many people understand, which shows why we chose this subject. So like if we choose, for example, a person, it's fine if it's written like this, this person is a famous Ukrainian writer dot this article is a stub, we say, well, it doesn't work because people will not know why to translate this article. So we want to show, at least in a few paragraphs, in a foreign version, that like, okay, this person was famous for this, this and this, this scientist invented this specific thing which is like widely known and so on, because we notice that people don't know why, the, like, we, we see in other lists people for whom we don't know why they are famous. We see some random town and we don't know what it's interesting for. And we think like, okay, we need to try to showcase basically why we include these people, objects, locations in the list. So like if we include a castle, we write like, okay, what was so historic about this? What is so famous about this? Because previously we saw that like also for us, we see some very interesting persons that we in Ukraine know this person is interesting, but we failed to showcase why. So like the more we showcase that this topic is interesting, the more interest it gets. We also try to define every year some criteria or some theme showing like, okay, our lists are based on something. So for example, in 2022, our lists were obviously influenced by the ongoing war, where we wanted to show like the war from different aspects. We also wanted to show, for example, in culture, we wanted to show either like works which were like inspired by the war or showcasing this topic or by people who were associated with this or for showing like some historical events that give like some background prehistory and so on for the topic like still giving the coverage for all like 10 thematic areas but like centering them around the topic which we think is important to cover this year so it was obviously war, at some point it could have been like Eurovision, at some point it could have been like this year we want to showcase like some, some anniversary or something like that. We give like some, <coughs> some scene and we also defined before like finalizing the list the target distribution by category say like okay we want 20 articles about history this year because we have like some important anniversaries but next year we will want 20 articles about culture because we'll have Eurovision. And then next year we want to give more articles about, let's say, geography because we want to give coverage for Wikilove's Earth sites and so on. So like every year we give like some target distribution so that we know we want more ideas here. We want to give a bit less attention to this so that like people from Transport Wiki Project do not come, oh, why did not you put 20 railway stations? Well, we wanted to have like five transport articles this year, but maybe we'll get 10 next year. So that like people become less unhappy and people become like, well, more trying to put their ideas on the topics that we want to get. And it's very important for us at least to do some rotation because we know that there are many interesting topics about Ukraine. And if you show the same people 
the same articles, the same topics for many years in a row. People will get used to them and if they have not written it for in this year, maybe like if we try again in two or three years, we will get new people. But like if we try three years in a row, we notice that the interest like goes down and the interest is really high only like when it's quite a new topic. So like if we do some rotation and we say, okay, this topic was here, but we have, for example, a similarly famous singer, we have a similarly famous like town to show and this gives us better coverage. This was like the first level when we, which we reached by 2019 when we thought we are reasonably good at making Ukrainian lists and now we still see a problem. So there went our level two, that for each language we thought that we would pick top 10 red links <coughs> and top 10 stops. And the idea is, well, first why top 10 red and stops? Because we want both people to write new articles on topics that are not covered and improve stops on topics that are like very famous, but if, for example, about Kyiv, a random Wikipedia has only one paragraph, I think this was a case of Slovenian at some point, if you have like one paragraph about Kyiv, then you should probably write more about it. And I think Slovenia wrote more about it at some point. So this is the way we find like, okay, these are very famous topics, but you have like very short coverage about it and we want to focus on improving these topics. And we found out this basically two ways that we found this for us as Ukrainian lists and for other countries that I will show later. So what, we, what our main inspiration was, it was the list of 500 vital articles about Ukraine. <coughs> Sorry. So that's a community generated list basically which shows like 500, oh, some of them were deleted or not created, but like basically all important topics about Ukraine, towns, historical events, culture, and so on. So at some point our community created this list. Uh, yeah, at some point our community created this list and we used it as an inspiration like, okay, these 500 articles are well covered in Ukrainian and English, but are they well covered in Polish, Latvian, uh, Serbian and so on, and they were not. So we, it, these were like easy picks. And then, for example, for Polish, most topics were obviously covered because there were a lot of Polish-Ukrainian writing campaigns in the past, and Sea Spring is also active in Poland and so on. So we picked other tools like PetScan, PageViews, or Wikipedia Diversity Observatory to pick like topics which are still not covered but which are important for us. Those are usually like not the most famous topics, like the most famous Ukrainian writer is probably already covered well enough in Poland, but like the writer number 10 is probably not yet. So that's how we chose like these articles and that looks like this, for example. So this was for Azerbaijan, where we said, well, Azerbaijan has no, in Wikipedia has no article about president of Ukraine or history of Ukraine or St. Sophia Cathedral, which is the main cathedral in Kyiv. And we said like, yeah, you can see that like, for example, for Azerbaijan, there were many minus signs. This year they wrote an article about Ivan Franco, who is probably second most famous Ukrainian writer. And that's, you can see that these articles are well covered in almost every other Wikipedia, but they are somehow missing in Azerbaijan. And these are like kind of gaps that we think Sea Spring should, cover, should help cover. And then, how we fixed it for others. So because Sea Spring is also a contest of writing articles about other countries, we wanted to create a good experience for people writing about other communities in Ukraine. So the first thing we did, we copied lists from Meta to Ukrainian Wikipedia because we think that people are more likely to contribute when the list is on their local Wikipedia and not on Meta and in a more user-friendly format. So we adapted the Lua module so that it displays links to Ukrainian Wikipedia instead of Meta links. And uh, it's red or blue, obviously, depending on the cover. So people see immediately what is red, what is blue, what they can write, what they shouldn't, what is already written. And for red links, we translated Wikidata labels into Ukrainian. So 
If the link is red, we show the Wikidata label. So every year before the contest, we add Ukrainian labels to as many articles as possible from lists of other countries, which is both improving Wikidata and creating a more user-friendly experience for participants. Uh, yeah, and level two, again, at the same time, we said, okay, for example, for popular countries in Ukraine and like Poland, we noticed that people very quickly write, <coughs> sorry, people very quickly write all top 100 articles from the list, and like by first couple of weeks of the contest, they are gone, because probably out of 100 articles, there were like five red links. <coughs> and we added for every country top 10 red links and top 10 stubs that are specifically in Ukrainian Wikipedia red or stubs. So <coughs> what we use for that is either articles that have many page views, many interwikis in the source Wikipedia, <coughs> or many incoming red links. For example, we have thematic project lists of red links. For example, there are like 20 articles linking to this specific person who is mentioned in other articles, but this person specifically is read. It may be author of some popular source on the topic, but it may be also like a person many, many notable people collaborated with, or like a town where many people were born or lived, but we don't have an article about it. So either we chose incoming red links, or popular articles that are still stubs, so we find for every like country we can have an article which gets like 10,000 views but has just a few sentences. This makes disappointed readers because they want to read about this topic, we know they do read about this topic but they don't get content. So we tried to create this list and that's how it looks like. So this is Albania. You can see both how our lists look like. So you can see that we show like translated red links, which are <coughs> in some cases became blue. So for example, these are popular articles. We have two written about Albania among what was like main red links this year and like 10 articles to improve. For example, Eddie Rama, who is prime minister of Albania, has just like a short stub of, you, of a paragraph or two in Ukrainian. And obviously it's a very popular article that many people want to read. <coughs> but, uh, well, it is too short and we wanted to, to see it improved. Or like the flag of Albania is probably, this is a flag of Albania, for example. It's also a stub and we want people to focus on improving this. <coughs> and uh, rather than like a random article from the list. Or not rather, but in addition. Do you have any other ideas on what we should do with article lists? Any thoughts, ideas, opinions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah, so for us it's the same story. I think that the list is a recommendation, but we like drive this recommendation by giving extra points for articles from the list. So that like we skew this choice basically. And we noticed in the past that for many community for many people, like they have inspiration on maybe like two, three articles that they really want to write, maybe like a famous person they know, or like a book they read, or something like that. But then like this reaches maybe one or two weeks of the contest and then their ideas stop and they like just pick articles from the list they like. And then they, uh, that's basically where lists become more important for us, at least. That beyond like the initial enthusiasm of I write about the topic I deeply care about, now people say, okay, I want to write about something, n something funny, something nice that I probably know or I found interesting. And that's where it's also important, for example, to make sure that articles about Ukraine on the list are like interesting enough for people. So like I want to write about a random scientist and like people see, okay, this Ukrainian scientist invented something really cool, I want to write about him or her. 
and vice versa if they see, okay, in the depths of Hungarian lease there is like some random scientist. I don't know what they did. Why would I write about him? Anything else? Any thoughts? Yes? And as I decided to my conversation, we mm -hmm. can decide to do in our community, we can add to other countries, yeah? Yeah, that's I will talk a bit later. Yeah. Because we tried this in Ukraine this year, I will talk in like next section. What topic you mean? No, it's like basically peop what people usually do. We, know, we, we, we discuss with participants what people usually do while dis deciding what to translate. They look, for example, on English Wikipedia and they read the first paragraph. And they see, okay, is this something interesting I want to translate or not? If like the first paragraph on English Wikipedia is inspiring enough, they go for it. That's some people do. I'm not sure if all people do this, but like that's the feedback we got from participants. Any other I, thoughts? I, I, I oh, sorry. No. Well, sometimes, sometimes we did it like for ourselves. We were when we are discussing with in, inside the community. We are saying, okay, we want this article because something. But like, we did not make it public, maybe we should. That's maybe a good point if you say, okay, well, I think, no, we did not really do it like fully, but like sometimes we can put like, okay, in extended list especially, we can say, okay, these are lists about like Eurovision contestants from Ukraine. So you can see, okay, the next 10 articles are like Eurovision participants from Ukraine. If you want to write about them, here is a list. These are lists of, I don't know, famous people of Ukrainian revolution of which we are celebrating 100th anniversary. So like, we wrote something like this in extended lists, but not in main lists. Maybe we should, but like currently there is no space for it because of the format. So something to think maybe that to add comments like why we want to write about this specific article in the lists. Yeah? Yeah. It yeah. 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 So maybe, well, it will be very hard to implement, but to point, hey, if you want to write about the city, try to look at the Slovenian article, maybe you Google Translate to get an idea of yeah. what kind of information it includes. And well, if you don't just copy paste the translation, but uh, yeah. really try to comprehend it, then what can you do with the source? Which source do you use? No, but like basically we know, I mean, we notice this as well, both for our participants and for participants writing about Ukraine, that like people prefer like medium sized articles. People prefer like article of 20, 30 kilobytes, which is long enough, but like not super detailed because for example, Ukrainian article about Odessa would have the full list of all like important economical companies of Odessa because we will write, okay, there is a small company of like food industry, which is famous in Odessa, but like nobody knows it about it in Slovenia. But like in Slovenia, it's more important to say, okay, Odessa has an important port and a few factories. Yes. That's probably what, 
Yeah, I mean, it's hard to implement, but it's good to discuss it. Does anybody have an idea how we can implement it? Because we thought at some point that like for very important articles we want to create like simple English versions. <laughs> I mean, I guess like, like the new like the new model that you like gets the weekly data data, right? So it doesn't change the length of the article in each. Like yeah. Basing scripture, article can also be longer, but have less information because that language just like especially German, for example, just use small words to describe the same thing. Um, so I'm not really sure, like you probably have to somehow have like maybe a Wikidata uh, attribute that highlights which like the length of the article in each language, but I'm not sure it's technically possible. Like the part the easy thing for to train the users to to like look at that and not just use the English version necessarily. It is possible using uh, projects, okay, we have projects, part of projects, so we can say, oh, you can, uh, yeah, it's possible, mm -hmm. if you like. Asaf? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, you wanted to finish? I wanted to suggest that this, this problem, I think, best lends itself to human uh, solutions, uh, meaning live communication, um, in the sense that pre-preparing in advance a digest version of the article about Odessa suitable for non-Ukrainians and doing that for every major article is way too much work. But if we recruit <coughs> in interested communities that are passionate about getting better coverage of their own country, their own culture, if we recruit a little team that uh, ideally has some language skills, right, they be able to communicate with other communities, <coughs> that will help once you say, I'm interested in writing about Odessa, but your article is way too detailed, can someone from your team help me pick the most important things, help me summarize together, like as literally on demand, right? When someone has this uh, uh, desire, I think that could help. Yeah, that's a good point to create like summary on demand service. Yes, some, I mean, not, not that you would do, they would do all the work for you, but they can point out and say, can totally skip this section. Here's the, you know, out of the important historical people who were born in Odessa, which is probably, you know, hundreds of people, you can say, well, at least mention these 10. Yeah. Good point. Any other thoughts? Or we are moving to the next one? Yeah, let's move um, on. Well, I mean, in terms of like articles itself, like, um, there used to be like this, um, this tool uh, that like highlighted like which are the most popular articles in a given language uh, Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And then checking that against like you can then compare it like with the with what's uh, what exists in your language Wikipedia and yeah. it highlights like which articles don't exist in Wikipedia. Yeah. That's the Wikipedia Diversity Observatory. It's the only yeah, problem it still exists, yes, exactly. It still exists, but it's a bit broken. So I, because it's a bit broken because like of Wikipedia, Wikimedia API update, basically, purely. Right. So you can say that source language is Ukrainian, source country is Ukraine, and let's say most page views, and target language is German. The link is video.vmcloud.org. And it's a bit broken because an API was updated and... Oh, and it often has some constraints because like usually the, the top articles are like pop singers, uh yeah. like, even, like scratch notability on, on your language Wikipedia. But there are some, some quite interesting articles usually in that list that you can add to your article list. Yeah, for example here you see that the most popular article is about Ukraine, which is normal, but the second is the pop demography of Ukraine which does not exist in German. And the third one is a film which presumably was popular when the snapshot was taken. And that's like one of the problem of this tool that the snapshots are not taken regularly anymore. Yeah. They, they are not updated because API change kills the tool. And as far as I know, there is like no maintainer now to fix it. Yeah. And then for example, you can see then there is like Crimean, uh, of Crimea, 
Mikhail Khrushchevsky, who is the first president of Ukraine. And then, for example, there is no article about Ukrainian Carpathians. Probably there is like article only about Carpathians in general. And so on. So like this gives us a good overview. We use it for creating like articles about other countries. I mean, the only problem that is a bit outdated. Yeah, and so like some, some articles Yeah. With like articles from that observatory. Yeah. Any anything else? Or next topic? Sounds like next topic. So next topic for us is sister projects. So why we wanted to add sister projects in C Spring? Because by default in other pro in all Wikimedia communities, C Spring happens only in Wikipedia. But we thought that first, it's a great opportunity to, de to develop sister projects, to raise awareness about these projects among new users, because C is a relatively easy topic. It's easy to understand the scope. It's easy to understand what you can write about. And while we think that we in Ukrainian have bridged the C gap of like covering the C countries on Wikipedia, we think that on many sister projects, it is still a gap and there is still not enough coverage of other countries of the region and we want to both encourage existing users to cover it and we want to encourage new users to come and use this as an entry point to the project. And C topics are popular on sister projects, so for example on Wikivoyage coverage of countries of C region is what people are mostly looking about because, well, now it's a bit more difficult but like before the war People were most actively traveling in the neighboring countries and they wanted to have coverage of the sea on Wiki Voyage. And so what we did in uh, sister projects, so we have a contest in WikiQuote since 2019 and our best result was 13 participants, uh, 92 of them, 92 new articles and 31 improved article. And in Wiki Voyage, the top result, oh, it's not 2013, it's 2023, sorry. So in Wikivoyage we had five participants as a top result and 39 new articles and seven improved. So not super great results per se for Wikivoyage, but given the size of the Wikivoyage community, which is quite small in Ukrainian, we were very happy to get this flow of new articles because it's still way bigger than what we get without the contest. We tried to get do something in Wikisource but it was way more difficult because of like two copyright supply. We need both the original and the translation to be in public domain. And there are not many, let's say, Serbian writers who were translated in Ukrainian more than 70 years ago. So this makes very short lists and very difficult to get also, because we noticed like some of these works were maybe published in diaspora in respective countries, but it's like, very difficult to get a good scan and so on, so we abandoned due to the difficulty. And we tried to do something on Wikimedia Commons, but we also abandoned because it was not very clear like what C Spring on Wikimedia Commons would look like. Uh, anybody else has experiences with sister projects in C Spring or thoughts about that? I mean, it's very easy, but like we think that if a person uploads 200 pictures of the chain bridge in Budapest, what would be the added value for the project? And it's quite unlikely that Ukrainians have like very niche pictures of Hungary that, that the commons needs. Or can you even travel there? So. Well, now yes, but like we tried it in 21, right. when people traveled more freely, but like, yeah. Natalia? Yes. As the sea springs. So I think that combination makes sense, like picking up spot for the sea happening at the same time, gives you a clear scope for including comments into the uh, into into the campaign. And then having some article because as you said, like generally upload pictures of uh, the sea region to commons probably would be difficult to do a lot of pictures yesterday from Georgian food to Georgia. So I think that uh, 
Yeah. Michal? Yes, it's almost really tricky. I mean, there are rare opportunities. Like, I, know, I can go to, for a concert of like, Japanese and Warsaw and have basically a photo of a Ukrainian band taken in Poland. But I don't know how much of it value basically it is. So go to basically the rest of it. But there is one huge missing point, which is a uh, uh, dictionary. Yeah. It looks like a very natural thing to encourage basically uh, dictionaries to go from you know, one language to the other. And I know that this is what most people basically do. I know, of course, that they are focused on one or two basic languages. But still, maybe we can somehow improve and encourage them. Does anybody have experiences with this fiction or in Sea Spring? Not in Sea Spring, but I can um, talk about difficulties in having a campaign in dictionary. Okay. Having a campaign in dictionary is difficult in a way that normally when we have a communities in the project, they kind of work together on the same similar things. And in dictionary, we have multiple people in which everyone does their thing and it's very difficult It's like, I think, a natural addition to the sea spring when I've encountered when I tried someday to uh, have a condition in the dictionary. It's, it, it starts from very different points depending on language. Like the Polish dictionary, the Georgian language, the Ukrainian language, and the Polish language are in a very different state. So sometimes it's easy to add things. Sometimes it's very difficult and have com competition in the same project with very different starting points and very different barriers for many people. So, that's kind of a thing that probably will need to be tackled somehow. But the way we did it is we created a list of tasks for people to fill in different languages. Michal? Just a side question. But does it need to be a competition? I mean, I understand that the dictionaries are in a very different place, but maybe we can frame it differently. But basically, we just reward people for yes, so participating. So you, you, you know what I was saying because I did it at the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Basically, C Spring doesn't have to be a competition yes. because the, the way we did it at some point when we felt that there is much less engagement than before, is to create a competition in a way that people are not competing against each other, but they're competing about the overall number of articles that mm -hmm. we created. And each time we pass a certain number of articles, everyone receives a bounce card, everyone receives a postcard. And at the end, when we're out of the budget, money and ideas for prices, and they can write the community support team in Media Poland created and performed a song for the participants, which was terrible. It's not a promise, and you will never see it, but it's fun. <laughs> what if yeah. we have connections? Hmm? What if we have connections? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we did not try on Ukrainian dictionary because Ukrainian dictionary community is not very active. But like, it would be easier because I think like Polish and Georgian are equally badly covered <laughs> in Ukrainian dictionary. Asaf, you wanted to say something? Uh, I want to suggest uh, that my best advice about dictionary is don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but, but it has a PS. PS because you should wait for tooling for Lexi. Yeah. Lexi, yeah, you, you have to the, you have, yes. I have a tutorial about Lexi, but I'm not telling you go and do it on Lexi now. We don't yet have the last one. Is the how, how to say the with the pronunciation. Yeah. Yes, you can already right now record pronunciations for words in a very nice tool called Lingua Libre. I've demonstrated it a number of times and I can do it again this conference if someone doesn't know it and wants to know it, even during the break. But what I'm saying is for, for actual writing of dictionary entries, definitions, example sentences, all that content, right now what we have is Lexine like Wikidata, like, like, you know, just typing it into the Wikidata interface, and that's not great. I'm saying that in a year or two, we will probably see tool builders building great input mechanisms for Lexi. 
that then would lend themselves to contribution campaigns. Okay. Uh, so what I'm suggesting to groups thinking now, how do we engage people on which journey, is wait a couple of years until we have great tools for inputting language data on Lex. Cool. Let's move on. So now we'll move into the topic selection. So what we ideally want, we want to address major content gaps and we want to improve popular but lower quality articles. So that's why we all organize C Spring because we think that's what it will bring us. And what we get is that owing to C Spring, some countries are not a gap anymore. For example, Poland is extremely well covered because easy to translate from Polish. Many people go to Poland, many people know Poland and everybody wrote about it, almost everything that they could. But somehow, for example, Serbia is not very well covered, probably less historical links, probably less interest in the community to write about Serbia. And so like we noticed, okay, the sea spring does not give us equal amount of articles. And also, by the way, we have very active wiki project Poland, but no very active wiki project Serbia, which is, might be the reason. And we also noticed that what apparently like similar things to what you mentioned that easy articles, people like them because it's easy to translate, for example, a random member of Olympic Relay because it would be quite clear structure with short, a few paragraphs, a nice table, very easy to translate, very easy to get points, but probably not very important. And we notice that people get like some random selection so they don't translate the entire Olympic Relay but like one random participant. So it's not even like good coverage of the topic. And we also notice that people like to translate lists and articles that are like lists, for example, sport result tables. They are very easy to translate if you take like, I don't know, Cup of Bosnia 2003. It is very easy to translate the article because very simple structure and uh, you get a lot of points because it has a lot of characters. But it's very hard to encourage, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Because they take uh, less effort, so it's much better. You can write, I don't know, 100 lists on time, you can write yes. like 10 articles, so we decided not to translate. Yes, that's what we did as well, yeah. So we incorporated the rule that lists are forbidden, yeah. lists or any, any type of short article. Yeah. Then we said, but it's very hard for us to encourage people to improve existing articles. That's what we found very difficult. And like basically, even if, and also even if we make a list of vital articles, no, nobody can give us the guarantee that it will be actually written. For example, we still have no article about Armenian diaspora in Ukraine, and despite the fact that among all C diasporas, probably the Armenian is the best known, we still don't have an article about it. And for example, the article about Chacha is still a stub of like a few lines. Probably many Ukrainians have... But like probably many Ukrainians have tried Chacha but did not write about it. So what we tried to fix is at the first level we adjusted the scoring system. So first we wanted to encourage writing out articles from contest lists. Usually they get like double points or bonus points. We encouraged improving existing articles. So we give to improving existing articles more points because we know it's more difficult because people like add their content into somebody else's structure. And we wanted, as you mentioned in Serbia, we discourage creating lists. So by either giving them way less points or not giving them points at all. Then we added to article is the top 10 red links and top 10 stops per community so that they give like, also they get the list bonus so that we say, okay, those are 10 red links for, let's say, Romania in Ukrainian and they get the same bonus points as uh, the article is created by Romanian community. Then we promote interest in articles on social media. So we say, okay, for example, there is no article about chain bridge in Budapest, which was the case until like two years ago. We show the picture like, you know this bridge, why don't you write article about it? Or something like that. So we try to promote the stories on social media to show that basically, despite C being well known, there are still gaps that people should fix. And we also worked with partners on article list suggestions that I will cover later in the next section. 
And so then what you mentioned in Turkey, that you have like about the countries. So what we realized that many C countries are not gaps anymore and they are actually among the best covered countries in Ukrainian Wikipedia. So we first rebranded the contest European Spring because the C is not a well-known brand in Ukrainian. Rather to say that C is not known at all as a brand outside people who participate in C meetings. <coughs> and in 2023, like last year, we expanded from C countries only to the entire Council of Europe because we tried to give it as an experiment because we noticed that some of the gaps are already not in the sea, but other Western European countries. So we said like, let's give it a try and like a bit reframe the sea spring. And we decided to introduce a coefficient per country. So we want to encourage writing articles about countries that are less well covered rather than countries that are very well covered. And what we did for this is to look as a number of articles on Ukrainian Wikipedia with properties of country of uh, citizenship or country of location on Wikidata. Or we, we tried to look at articles by category, but it was a bit less accurate because in the country, in the history of, uh, let's say, Lithuania, you have the whole Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, which biases the history and so on. So it was a bit less accurate or we compared the articles in Ukrainian Wikipedia to English Wikipedia, saying it would be probably a fair reference, and compared all of this to the country's population to say like, okay, which countries are less covered? And we wanted to add bonus points to the countries that are actually less covered. This is in Ukrainian, but you can see the overview. So for example, we noticed that in Ukraine, we had less coverage about some Western European countries like Belgium, Denmark, or Netherlands were less popular but among C, Serbia and Turkey were particularly less popular, which correlates with the fact there are no active wiki projects about these countries. And on the other end of the spectrum, the countries which got the smallest coefficient are almost all either neighboring countries, like Moldova, Poland or Romania, where people have a lot of like cultural links, a lot of interest, or Croatia, because we have a super active wiki project, Croatia in Ukrainian Wikipedia, which covered Croatia in deep detail, so like, or Georgia, also a lot of historical links and an active project. So like, we thought that this would be a good way of like driving people to write about countries they don't, we don't have covered. Once again, this is mainly for people who don't have ideas ready, but for people who have, who need an inspiration. Any other thoughts about topic selection for the sea spring, Anton? I think we did this once in Wikigap that we allowed only improving articles in one year rather than creating new ones. And it was decently successful. Not super successful, but it still attracted people. Maybe we should try this in C Spring once, like we only improve articles and we don't create new ones. Any other thoughts? Michal? Um, okay, uh, two things. Uh, first, it was a story it's a little bit tricky thing because uh, like Poland and Ukraine this is a very good example. A lot of these articles actually are about the the France is about the shared history for some reasons. Oh not only. Yeah yeah but a lot of yeah, but, uh, then it's basically difficult to add angles so it isn't a whole journey to the Ukrainian article or Canada article basically. Uh, with this thing that the people are uh, willing to write about the countries next to them I mean this is the scratching the each. For me personally the city was basically to find with the English source centricity in a way. So basically there was a natural tendency because everything goes very often goes via English Wikipedia that has English English sources in many countries, even in Berlin. That basically we are much more focused on 
about I don't know, United States of America than about basically the most closed countries because it's easier basically to get things from English than to get from I don't know Hungarian. Uh, yeah. And if I write about the Hungary, it's very often via English language because there is no connection. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, I don't know if I would, would like personally to find with this urge that the people basically want to write about the neighbor. For me, it's more about this problem basically of the English language as the dominant cultural language of the world. But this is, this is my thing. Yeah, but like... Uh, and, yeah, that's, that's just, so it's just a second comment. Uh, and with the, uh, with the topics, I can assume that there are some top topics which are quite well popular, like you know, geography and maybe history. Yeah. But probably, for instance, contemporary book culture, contemporary book culture, Ukrainian, maybe not that well popular as opposed to TV and vice versa. Yeah, like what we found that it's decently well covered because people from Ukraine also go to like concerts in Poland, for example. There are, might be like some specific gaps that are not well covered, but about the English centricity, like. We notice, for example, people in Ukraine write a lot about Romania, which is the first neighboring country, but like the second neighbor in Serbia is less covered because less people go there, mm -hmm. less people have links there and so on. So it's like, it's still a neighboring, it's still a region's country, mm -hmm. but it's like just somehow less popular. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Yeah, Vladimir? Yeah. yeah. Oh, five minutes. Yeah, considerations of uh, introducing the awards uh, for the good articles. Mm -hmm. Oh, for that's the next section, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so we'll look okay. uh, And the first question was also uh, is it possible? Yeah, this is uh, the previous this, this? This, one, this will be a third question, but the second is uh, about uh, the comparison. Uh, maybe this is not a good comparison because it's uh, not the. Uh, as successful a project as the C3. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about uh, the Asian one. So, yeah. Uh, they promote the high quality of articles. Uh, as I understand, it was a huge problem there because I had never seen something like uh, this in other projects. So they demand two, at least two sources, mm -hmm. and, uh, three uh, kilobytes yeah. of the text. So uh, would you ever, or in any scenario, consider something like this? Yes. And so the third question, uh, while I'm listening, and uh, it's not the three, yeah, this, uh, am I right that I don't see those? Uh, well, we limited ourselves. Well, you found, you found. Sorry? Sorry? Which one? I'm not seeing the laws of Turkey. Turkey is to Rechina. Turkey is to Rechina. To Rechina? Yeah. And this one is to Yeah. I'm also reading to the. Yeah. Kill a hundred, but to Rechina. Yeah. No, but like for basically, you found a small elephant in the room that basically. We had a, a big conflict in the community. Should we write about Russia and Belarus for obvious reasons? So a Council of Europe was a solution that satisfied everybody, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but it's like because also Belarus is extremely well covered by people, and like we found that basically the articles we are missing about Belarus are the articles that nobody wants to write about, like Belarusian generals. <laughs> Uh, we have a few minutes left, so I will quickly go through the partners in one minute. So what we did with partners is we <coughs> had first partners like Austrian Corporations Bureau or Czech Center. What they give, they gave us like some special awards to this country and they gave us like list ideas. And they also, we also had partners like local cultural centers or diaspora organizations for workshops. So for example, we had a workshop for Sea Spring in Poland to encourage to write Ukrainians about Poland, Ukrainians who are already based in Poland or Ukrainians who, be, who are based in Czech Republic, for example. And we had communication partners to share, for example, information on about like Sea Spring on people interested in, among people interested in Greece, for example. So that to attract this kind of people to organize workshops. And we found this helpful. Any other like 
good experiences with partners on C-Spring? Or we skip it? Yes, so I will quickly write about quality and judging. Yeah, two minutes left, sorry. We were passionate about previous topics. But this is important, so maybe somebody will want to overstay. Uh, basically for quantity and judging, quality, and ju quality versus quantity problem. So we found that we want basically C spring not to reduce the quality of articles overall, but instead we get a very high predominance of content translate because it's easy to translate an article and not everybody proofreads them well, especially if people translate from a familiar language, if they translate, for example, from English and they speak good English, we usually get decent quality, but if people translate from Slovenian and they don't speak good Slovenian, they get sometimes quite funny sentences. And very, very few users write original articles with own analysis of sources. So we found like every year, just maybe like five people who say, okay, I go to a library to write, to take a book about the history of Austria and they write about Austria this way. And very little to no collaboration among people. So the funniest stories were when two users tried to create two articles about the same topics with like one bracket of difference in the name to make sure these are two different articles. So this is like the anti-example of collaboration, preference for easy articles that I mentioned. And uh, because we get like 4,000 articles, it's very difficult to judge. So what we did with scoring, we gave points on the sum of size times quality, size in bytes, where we try to filter by number of characters and quality as judged by the jury. So this means that we evaluate quality of each article and we get like the total, the total score is this based on the size of articles and their quality. We added an additional price for the best article and if your article receives a good or feature status, it gets like basically a prior, it, it is a priority article for this price. So for example, if there are 10 good articles, we will choose the best article and only among these 10 articles. If there are no good articles, we look at all other articles. So that's how we encourage people to write really high quality articles and contest basically in a separate nomination so that they are not competing for just number of articles. For size, we do not consider article less than 3.5 kilobytes. 3.5 kilobytes being the average size of the stub in Ukrainian Wikipedia, we say, well, if it's less than average stub, we don't want to give any points for it. And in addition to, to country topic coefficients, we give more points for original articles. So if a person did not translate it, but used the uh, own so analysis of sources, uh, we give it uh, like more points. And if it's a translation which is not proofread by a person, but like just dump of machine translation, it gets zero points. If it's a copyright violation, it gets disqualified. And what we also did with the jury, that we made less focus on formatting, but more focus on quality. So the jury gives more points for very well-structured context content, but like probably if there is no info box, we give it like same number of points because newbies might not know how to do info boxes well enough, or if it like Gig Infobox has some broken wiki data, we don't remove points for it or something like that. But, yeah. Yes. Yes, that's what we are doing. We, and we also like one important addition this year, so we encouraged people to write less but better articles, and we get a multiplier of 0 0.99 to the power of the number of articles. So, for example, if person writes 20 articles, the article number 20 will get a multiplier of 0 0.99 to the power of 20, which is a very intricate mathematical way of saying like, if you want to write a lot of small articles versus one big article of the same size, one big article will bring you more points. And for judging, I will go very quickly to leave space for questions. So what we want to do is to have a simple, set, a simple, formatting, a simple format for judging. We created a jury tool which worked well in peacetime, difficult to maintain in the time of war, unfortunately, but like very easy tool where a person say, sees an article and puts basically a score in the table. We want to have at least one jury member reviewing an article, but because so many articles, 
we need a big enough jury so that we get at most like 100, 150 articles per jury member. 200, yeah, now, yeah, sometimes 200, but yes, the order of magnitude is the same. And we have a very clear guidelines for scoring so that people can say, okay, this is a two, this is a one, this is a zero, without like thinking for a long time. And we try to give some feedback to participants, but we mainly focus on newcomers. We, at the beginning, try to give feedback to everyone, but we don't have capacity to give feedback to all 5,000 articles, 4,000 articles. And we give feedback only to like newbies to say, okay, your article gets less points because this, this, and this. So that they can improve later. If we have capacity, obviously, we give it, we, we give it for as many users as possible. Any other ideas on judging thoughts? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. How difficult it is, how easy it is to make it automatic with a bot. Yeah. Copy pasting 4,000 articles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, officially the time is over, so, and this is the last slide, so if you want to go, you can go. If you want to stay, you can stay. So uh, we, we count the number of bytes added to the article. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use yeah. theories on, on two fours, so yeah. since we, we get automatically, yeah. so it's both for a good article, but also for yeah. contribution might be offered to the the yeah. Can be by other yes, that's it's what we do as well. Yeah, that's what we do as well. Yes. So, like, you can count bytes added by the person, not bytes in total. Yes. Any other sorts of like how you change judging in your country to like prioritize quality, Michal? So we don't do judging. Uh, we don't judge. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Zafar? And maybe uh, I could also do, like you're talking about coefficients, maybe we can do some uh, copy coefficients. For example, this year I saw the, uh, many football players from Hungary, it's <laughs> more than 30, 40 players and exist players. Maybe we can do some low coefficient for the that type of football player, because football is the very popular in this region, everybody is opening the uh, players. Maybe we can put the fancy player, put the more coefficient, the two or the three. Yeah, I mean, we tr it's very difficult to draw the line yeah. because like what we found, for example, if it's like a current like football player from a Hungarian league, probably it's not famous. But if somebody writes like niche articles about 1920s football players, Probably nobody covers them yet. Yeah, so yeah, of course, maybe we can put some uh, yeah. born 
years. Or no, but like this becomes like very complicated, and you never know in advance what people will join you. Yeah, yeah. So it's like we found this as well because like we try to formalize it with more like structured criteria. So for example, we had a person who writes very good articles about national football cups. They are very easy to write because you translate just the tournament list. Yes. And like you get a lot of bytes, but we cannot like say don't write articles about football cups because next year he will write about hockey cups. And it will be the same easy translation and like same number of bytes and like same easiness. So like we tried to put out by like type of articles rather than by topic. But like if your community decides, okay, football for sea spring gets less points, maybe that's the thing. But like we know, for example, that we have active football VT project and they like to write articles about sea spring. So yeah, we are finished, we are finished almost. <laughs> We can talk now. We are we are talking. We are talking. Join to talk. <laughs> we are talking about sea spring. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Thank you very much. Thank you.